Hey, it's Christian again from drawtrainer.com. I've got another quick video for you. In the last video, we discussed setting page size presets and saving those so that you can quickly open your business card side or your po or size or your postcard size, whatever it is, the product uh, that you're working on or the, you know, whether it's a Facebook ad or whatever it is, you can save all those presets in Corel Draw directly. And uh, I told you that there was a method that I feel is better that I use more often and that is to create an actual template and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the one we just created business card that's gonna give me my preset size open that up and now inside of here I actually wanna have my my edges where I establish my cut boundary and my safety margin for my print products because uh, you know whenever you're setting up print products you've got those templates to deal with um, and this is, to me, the easiest way to set that up. And, you know, it takes a little setup the first time, but then after that you'll never have to do this again. If you if you file, file your, uh, save your files correctly and just use this every single time. All right? So if I double-click on my rectangle tool, it's going to set a rectangle the exact same size as my page. So that's a great shortcut to know. Because a lot of times you're trying to line things up and you might, you know, have whatever you have here, a, a text box or, uh, you know, any kind of box or something like that. And, you know, if you want to line that up in the center, you can obviously align it to that other item. Okay, and we'll talk more about that type of thing. But, but that's one reason this is a helpful thing is to have your uh, artboard or your page size be an actual object. All right, so we've set our page size to be an actual rectangle, and so now you see we've got the object there. Put it back where it belongs, and now I'm just going to copy this, Control C, and paste it, Control V. All right, and it's a great idea uh, to be learning your shortcuts. You can do that as you hover over things. It's going to tell you um, the rectangle tool is F6, and you know so as you're going through your menu. Um, always be looking at these shortcuts because that will teach you you know all the shortcuts and a lot of these are common throughout many softwares um, so anyway we've got this copied and now we're going to paste it okay with the control V and now it's here I've got to make sure that this is not locked see how that is locked the ratio and I'm gonna unlock that ratio you can see the little icon is unlocked now all right, so remember we, we have everything set for a bleed. So what we want to do is make sure that we set it for actual size. So if you remember our business card through printlikethis.com, actual size was 3.5 by 2. Whoops. And that is a standard business card size just about anybody you're going to get it from. Okay, so I took this and I set my outline to red because that is going to be my hard edge of my product 3.5 by 2 if I click on that you can see 3.5 by 2 so that tells me where my hard edge is uh, and to do that you just simply click your object and then right click on the color you want it to be we're gonna make that one red alright I'm gonna copy that and paste it again because we have our safety margin that we need to uh, take into account also. So I've pasted it again. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you do this in, but I'm going to make it green by right clicking on that. And then I'm going to make sure this is unlocked, which it will stay unlocked if you unlocked it on the previous item. And now I need to take off another quarter of an inch. So instead of 3.5, it's going to be 3.25. And instead of 2, it's going to be 1 point 75 hit enter okay and because we have an eighth inch safety margin and we've got an eighth inch uh, full bleed and then this is going to be our final cut edge and so that way when we go to put our uh, you know our objects in here we don't want to put anything outside of this green box basically so and every our titles or uh, contact info or whatever we're putting in here that we don't want to be full bleed we don't want it to go past this green line because it's going to get close to this edge and if, if anything should shift during production or anything like that it's going to be really obvious and, and you're, you know, the closer you get to the edges the 
the more obvious any little imbalance is going to be. So that being said, all our critical print items will remain inside the green box. All of our full bleed items, so say if, you know we have some design, say this is a, a graphic image like a picture, and we want it to be the full bleed. Well, we got to make that go all the way to the edges, all the way around. You know, so you've got to go all the way around. So you've got to set your image to to exceed this red line all the way out to your final bleed border. So there we have it, and that explains the the template. If you don't know how to use that, and then. All we got to do now is say file, save as, and we're going to save it under, well, I'll just go to my documents. I think I saved it here yesterday. I'm just going to save over it. Business card template. So I'm going to name it business card template. Okay? And then I'm going to hit save. Do I want to replace it? Yes. Now you'll just be set, you'll be naming it, whatever you want to name it. Okay, so now I have this saved as its own template. All right, and I'm just going to exit out. I don't need to save my info on my clipboard. And then, so now what happens is, let's say I've got to design a new one. Then what I'm going to do is just go open, go back to where I saved it. I'm going to open business card template. And then as soon as I open this, the best thing you can do is go ahead and save it as whatever it is that you're going to name this. So I'm going to name this Dive Serve Cards. And that will be the next project that we work on is making some business cards for a dive service uh, company. So, all right, save that. And so it looks exactly the same, but now I can go ahead and start editing and doing whatever I want to do, and it's going to be saved as what it needs to be saved to ensure that I don't save on top of my template. So that's a very important step, uh, I think, to do that in that order. All right, so that's it. That's how you save your template. I hope that is helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.